the madman. Finally, last class, we have a warrior. Starting with Eternium Rover, a fantastic defensive option. Two stars. It is better than Armorsmith, which is saying something. Armorsmith has seen play in Control Warrior. Fantastic card against certain decks like Odd Rogue, Odd Paladin especially. I'd love to have that. But the main problem is that there are a variety of decks out there. It's not just aggro. And there are a lot of decks that Eternium Rover is dead against. All these combo decks against minion board control centric decks that aren't necessarily trying to kill you very fast. Uh, you could just have this die to a Flame Imp with no real benefit. It's just kind of eh. I don't think that Control Warrior has the slot for it. Especially since Armorsmith has not seen play for a while. And yes, it's a mech, but just like Hunter and Paladin before it, I do not see Mech Warrior working out. Those just lose to not only combo decks, but also Zeo. Addendum to that, I do see Mech Warrior working, but it's not going to be some sort of magnetic thing. It's going to be a very selective amount of mechs, uh, with pretty much just Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, and Omega Assembly. Omega Assembly! Now here's a mech card I can get behind. Five stars. One mana, draw three cards! Wow! And also one mana, get a card, even before ten mana, which isn't terrible. Uh, if you need the mech because you're under too much pressure, then sure. Not as good as actual cards because they're mechs and some of the mechs aren't great, but... Compare this card with Elise Trailblazer, which is a 5 mana 5-5 five five that shuffles a pack into your deck. So you still have to wait to draw the pack, and then you have to pay an additional 2 mana to get 5 random and girl cards. And those are like usually pretty mediocre too, and that's played in control decks and no one scoffs at that. Like when you compare Omega Assembly and how good it is compared to that, one mana, skip all that random stuff in the middle and just get the three mechs immediately. That seems pretty awesome. You'll put that into a control warrior list because that's a deck that can consistently get to 10 mana. Maybe you run Dead Man's Hand, maybe you get your Dead Man's Hand onto Omega Assembly. Maybe that's enough value to beat out other control decks then. Also, symbiotic relationship with Dr. Boom Mad Genius, when all your mechs have Rush, makes mechs quite a bit better. Weapons Project. Five stars. Whew. Two mana, two, three weapon. Who cares if your opponent also gets a 2-3 weapon if you're playing Control Warrior. You gain the 6 armor, which is also great, so it cancels out their weapon. Uh, they gain 6 armor, which you don't care about since you're Control Warrior. And even better, you can combo this with Harrison Jones. 7 mana, draw 3 cards, get a 5-4, get a 2-3 weapon, gain 6 armor. It's almost like ultimate infestation for Warrior. Other than that, Weapons Project also eliminates opponent's weapons, which could be excellent against stopping Quick of the World Tree from Druid. This little card is gonna make a big impact, I say. Really bolster up Control Warrior's matchups against everything. Rocket Boots! One star. Cards that cycle are usually pretty good, but cycling decks tend to be Control Warrior decks. And do any of your Control Warrior minions want Rush? Not really. You'd rather gain 5 armor with Shield Block. Just too small an effect and not really what the deck is looking for in order to include into Control Warrior. And what about a mid-range or an aggro deck? Well, aggro decks don't really want rush. Mid-range decks maybe, but two mana is quite steep on this ability. Dynomatic, two stars. It's a really cool minion, which I'm just going to read as five mana, three, four, deal five damage to enemy minions, a split across enemy minions rather. Because you're going to be in that spot all the time when you're playing this in Control Warrior, which is the deck that you would put this in. Also activates your Acolyte of Pain. And yet, the two stars is there just because it is five mana. I don't know if Control Warrior can fit this card in. It didn't quite make the cut in the Theory Crafted deck that I made for Control Warrior. But it was pretty high on the list. It was like in the top 40 cards, which means I could easily see it entering Control Warrior. And if the meta became more aggro focused, especially with multiple small minions, then Dynomatic is pretty good. Notably, Dynomatic is really good following up Bloodraiser because Bloodraiser deals a bunch of AoE damage to small, wide boards. Uh, swing at the Bloodraiser, swing with it again the next turn, Dynomatic to finish off everything else. That could work out well. Super Collider! One star! And yes, it's a five mana weapon. Yes, it only deals one damage. 
And yes, it's almost useless against combo decks, but against aggressive or mid-range decks, you can get a lot of damage in a Super Collider. It basically kind of does massive amounts of damage to two minions at once. But given that it's only good against minions pretty much, and one-dimensional and clearing the board, and Warrior can already do that fine, I don't think it'll actually see play. Security Rover, one star. It's like Hogger, and boy is this a lot of stats off of that Hogger. And that Hogger wasn't even seeing very much play. The stat line on this is just so bad. Like a 2-5 stat line is something alongside of 3 mana, and certainly you can expect it to take damage at least once. It's just so slow. Probably just because they were trying to balance around the power of Magnetize, but by being too scared of Magnetize, there's a lot of weak cards as a result, such as Beryllium Nullifier, one star. I can understand Blizzard's reluctance to make the Beryllium Nullifier better in terms of either mana cost or in stat value, because if you Magnetize Nullifier onto a mech with Taunt, it is possible that some decks are just locked out completely, and maybe the Hearthstone team looked at them and was like, you know, that's no fun. The opponent will just be helpless. We can't have that happen now, can we? But it strikes me as a very strange philosophy, given that Shutterwalk and Malagos Druid will also make your opponent feel helpless. So I, for one, would have been just fine with Beryllium Nullifier getting more stats or a lower mana cost or something like that. Uh, as stands, it's 7 mana for 11 stats, and 11 stats isn't even good for a 5 mana card. You get the magnetic effect, but there are just no magnet uh, mech guys that are critical to keep on the board. Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, 5 stars. I had this card in my top 10, pretty high up, and I think it's going to help carry Control Warrior to be an awesome deck in the meta. Supported with Weapons Project and Omega Assembly, uh, these are some great tools, and Control Warrior with the Azelina now also beating Shutterwalk potentially. It's just a good time, I say. Now the problem is Control Warrior is a very tough deck to play, and I'm sure that people will play it incorrectly, which is going to lower the win rate of Control Warrior. Despite all that, the tools that Warrior is getting, I feel like, is good enough. And yes, this Dr. Boom Mad Genius text does say for the rest of the game your mechs have rush which means that you would probably be tempted to put more mechs in your deck, but I think the main ability is the control hero power that it offers. It uh, gives you inevitability and value over the long run against other control decks. Against combo decks, Dr. Boom is helping by giving you that 7 armor, as well as the potential to gain 7 armor a turn. On average, given the 5 rotating hero powers, it's still giving you the average of 2 armor a turn. Against aggro, that's where Dr. Boom Mad Genius is slow and probably won't be good, but fortunately you have everything else in Warrior to help you against aggro. And the mechs have rush as a nice bonus with Omega Assembly. And then we've got the Boom Ship. Three stars. This is a great card to fit right into Recruit Warrior. I don't think it's going to define the deck of Recruit Warrior since it's just a nice addition to the deck. You'll play it if you drew your cards of big stuff and you also have the Boom Ship. Uh, which does mean that I'm not even absolutely certain that LC play in these big recruit warriors, but on average, you'll draw the boom ship and you'll have a few big minions to play in the usual recruit warrior deck this slate. Basically allows you to not only cheat out an extra, or in the best case, two extra big minions from your hand, and they get rush, which could really help you stabilize very fast. So all in all, Warrior does get a lot of good tools for Control Warrior, and alongside with the Azelina change, uh, which made it defeat Shutterwalk, Control Warrior is in an excellent spot for the meta to come. And Recruit Warrior gets this nice boom ship toy to go with it. Mech Warrior I don't see really taking off, but I guess of the three classes that have mechs, I at least anticipate that Warriors will have the most played mechs, just off of Dr. Boom Mad Genius discovering mechs. Well, and Omega Assembly. So the theory is all mechs that are played in this meta are going to be discovered randomly through Omega Assembly and crafted by Dr. Boom, Mad Genius.